you can of course complicate this a little uh, further now here i have taken a little more to this so we already know about this part okay uh, it corresponded to this part okay this part is the same now we have we have added up these subsystems how should we model this how should we model this system electrically so you can see here uh, we have uh, this part the same current or the flow passing through this r element through this subsystem which is shown in blue over here and also through this c element it's a common flow i element so we represent a one junction show this i element and we have this uh, source of effort connected directly to it the same current passing through this r and c elements so they have been shown here and also through this subsystem now we are providing the same current to this subsystem but what is happening at this subsystem is that this current is getting split it is going into two subsystems one is this inductance and another subsystem which is given in red here so for splitting of current splitting of flow what we have for splitting of flow what we have what we need is a zero junction so we have the zero junction this current uh, it gets split uh, one part goes through this inductance the other goes through this capacitance and another subsystem so here you have one part going into this capacitance the other going into a subsystem okay so what is there in this subsystem here again you have the current splitting into two parts one is this r element and the other is this inductance so splitting of current again requires a zero junction so the current is again split into two parts because the flow has to be uh, split into two so use this zero junction part of it flows through this inductance and part of it flows through this resistance so this is how you can model this system very easily using bond graph then comes the question of causalling this system now there are two ways in which we can causal this system uh so i'll discuss with you the first way in which uh it has it can be causal yeah so let us keep these causal strokes aside for a moment and now let us start causing this part of the system we started with an effort here uh, because it's a source of effort so we place a causal stroke here uh, <clears throat> this c element you place a causal stroke here okay and this element here will just remove its causality for the moment let us see what we are going to get uh so uh next is we will start causing the i elements so in this i element uh, we can uh, place a causal stroke here so flow has come into this one junction uh, into this zero junction uh, but uh, it's not a common flow it's a common effort junction so it doesn't help much Uh, here also we have an i element we will causal it place a causal stroke here flow has come into this zero junction but it uh, it doesn't help much so now we will um uh take the c element here and we'll place a causal stroke here because it's an integral causality so a bond has brought in effort over here 
but that's also not helping much. So now comes the question of how do you causal these two R elements? One option is that you can causal the R element by uh, you can place uh, this R element in proper uh, causality like this so that <coughs> this one junction the causal stroke will come here. So this bond is bringing in flow. Uh, when a bond brings in effort into this zero junction by this causal stroke, the other bonds have to accept it. So causality for this zero junction also is respected. For this one junction, two bonds are bringing in effort. The remaining bond has to bring in flow, so we'll place a causal stroke here. So flow has come into this one junction. Uh, in this zero junction, one bond has brought in effort. The other bonds should bring in the information of. So this is a completely causal um, bond graph. Okay, it represents the causality for this system. One of this this is one option. You can see the this R is in causality like this, and this R causality like this. They are different patterns. Here the stroke is away from R, here the stroke is towards R. Now let us see another way in which this causality can be done. We have the second causal pattern. Okay. Now in this, what we will do is take the causal stroke, everything else remaining the same. We'll place a causal stroke for the R element here instead of here. And then you see that uh, because uh, an effort has been brought in by this bond, the other bonds have to accept it. This is already in I uh, in integral causality, so there's no problem. Here, the causal stroke will come here. This is a one junction, two bonds have brought in uh, effort. Uh, the remaining bond has to bring in flow. So the causal stroke will come here. In this zero junction, a bond has brought in effort. Okay, the other bonds have to respect it. So the causal stroke will come here and here. This is already in integral causality, so nothing to worry. Uh, now here, one, two, three, these bonds have brought in efforts. So you're left only with this the causal stroke has to be placed here because now this has to decide the flow on this junction. So this is the second alternative pattern for causing the same bond graph. But when you try to simulate this system, you will find that you get the same response. The response, uh, even though you have different causal patterns, you will see that Another interesting observation will be that the number of elements determining the states, the number of states for this system remains the same. Okay, irrespective of the pattern of causality. If you look here, you have using using the first pattern of causality, you have these elements contributing the states and the same elements contribute the states again causal pattern is different so the the order of the system remains the same the behavior of the system remains the same it's just uh, an interpretation of how you causal the system uh, how you consider the causality for the r elements in this in this specific case uh, I hope uh, you are able to follow uh, what has been covered so far uh, in, in this uh, lecture.